to us, 7 o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. This is the regular meeting of Council of the Municipality of Swan Valley West, held in Council Chambers at 216 Main Street West, Swan River, Manitoba, this 26th day of March, 2024, 7 p.m. Present this evening, myself, Reeve Bill Gade, Councillors Brian Burek, Brad Kushnerik, Kerry Blasha, RJ McGregor, Byron Zabrun, and Terry Neely. Our interim CAO, Pat Ellingson, is with us, and our videographer, Jeremy Bergen, is, well, he was here a second ago, I'm sure he's coming back. We have everyone present tonight, so we're going to skip uh, by that and go into number two, adopting agenda. Be it resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of council held this 26th day of March 2024 shall be adopted as presented. Is there someone that wishes to move? Councillor Burek? Is there someone that would second the resolution? Councillor McGregor. Is there any additions or changes that anyone would like to see tonight? Councillor Blasha. Two of us were absent, but it says we gave committee reports that could probably be removed. Uh, you mean in the minutes? Yeah, in the minutes. Okay, we'll get there shortly. We're just doing the agenda. We're judging yeah. agenda, yes. Yep, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll be right there. Anything else for the agenda tonight? Hearing nothing, we'll call the question. Those in favor? That is carried. Let's go to those minutes now. A copy of them is attached to the agenda for everybody. Be it resolved that the minutes for the regular meeting, a regular council meeting held on Tuesday, March 12th, be adopted. And I have presented, but I'm going to change it to uh, corrected because we'll be making that change. So as corrected, is there someone to move the resolution? Councillor Blasha and someone to second? Councillor Neely. Uh, so we have the one correction we need to make. I see staff noting that already. Is there any other errors or omissions in the minutes tonight? Has everyone had a chance to look at them already? Okay, no one needs more time. So hearing nothing, we'll call the question. Those in favor? That is carried. We're heading to number four, public works report. Uh, so a copy of the public works report is attached. I'll read it for us tonight. Uh, this is written earlier today. So number one, clean ditches by Co-op Agro. Cleaned some culverts in the north that ran over. Opened up seasonal roads. Filled and graded and graveled washouts in the north. Stockpiled approximately 350 yards of gravel at the Swan and Durban shop for quick access. Tried to run our steamer and doesn't seem to produce pressure or heat after a significant amount of time. We're looking into operational requirements for testing and inspection. It appears that it's required to be inspected by a gas fitter annually. It's undetermined if a boiler ticket is required at this time. We're waiting to hear from the Office of the Fire Commissioner. I can further advise that later this afternoon there was some information back from the fire commissioner. The early indication is it's a steam generator, not a steam vessel, which means it wouldn't require an operator certification, but they're double checking and making sure on that, and they should be back to us again shortly. We moved dump box off of unit number 203, the old Benito garbage truck, prepped the frame for the flat deck, and currently gathering quotes on a gooseneck trailer and flat deck. Is there any questions tonight on the public works report? Is that steamer going to get going? It did not get going yet. Um, they're either, they were hoping to know already today if they want to make sure that we can legally run it before they spend a bunch of money fixing it. But then I think the plan is for it to go to Riddles to get fixed uh, and see what's going on with it. Because they ran it for two hours and it didn't get hot. So it used enough propane to get hot, but the water's not getting hot. It's just venting it all out. So something's not right with those burners. So um, the hope is that they have their news and have it fixed before it melts again. So there's certainly some culverts in the south that are full of ice now yeah. that will be needed for. Yeah. Worst case scenario, we'll have to find another solution. Yeah. But we'll keep our fingers crossed that it turns out okay. Anything else for public works report? Do you folks want a resolution to accept it tonight? Or are you... I'm not seeing a bunch of yeses. Okay. Uh, so we do have tonight a couple of delegations on the agenda. We have one for 710 and one for 720. And I don't know if anyone's here for those yet or not, but at 710 we're going to hop out of what we're doing and go and do some real call and see if we have some people for that. Uh, but we'll continue on for now. So we'll go to 61 general checks. Be it resolved, the Council of the Municipality of Swan Valley West hereby approves the following payments. General checks number 19593. 19619, the amount of $31,867.85. Is there someone to move the resolution? Councillor Neely and Councillor 
there to second. I do have the checks and invoices here if anyone has questions about them. Who wants to go first? Councillor Blasha. So, 19599, and that would be the. Hydro? Yeah, the 760 How come that one's so high? 760 Yeah. Um, that's water treatment plant. Let's go find it in the pile. So this has electrical reading of 5,400 kilowatts actual. So the electricity charges is 619. And the gas charges are 1,400 cubic meters for $532. Um, these are both actual readings. I don't have the previous month with me to know if it was perhaps a... I just never noticed it being that high before. Yeah, the whole amount the previous time was $706. So I'm wondering if it was an estimate or if something happened. Do you know anything about it? I do not. I'm afraid I don't have anything more I can share. Um, if you get a chance, can you just poke Jody and see if there, we know anything that happened there? My first guess is that maybe it was an estimate for a couple months. Because it's not a very big space. No, so it's hard to believe much. it could be. Okay. okay, we'll pull public works and see if they happen to know an answer. We'll get back to you on that. So Any other? The mirror, maybe. It's funny that both the gas and the electricity are high, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's double. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any know. other ones tonight? No. Not for me. Anybody else? No. Uh, hearing nothing, we'll call the question on the resolution. Those in favor? That's carried. 6 2 payroll checks. Be resolved the council of the municipality of Swan Valley West hereby approves the following payments. Payroll payments number 348 to 361, amount of $23,439.57. Is there someone that wishes to move the resolution? Councillor Kushner and someone to second the resolution. Councillor Zabrun. Copy the payroll checks are attached in a private view for council to take a peek at. Uh, if there's any generic questions, we can take them now, otherwise, we need to take them in camera. Does anybody have questions tonight on payroll checks? <coughs> Hearing nothing, we'll call the question on the resolution. Those in favor? That's carried. 6-3, indemnities. Be resolved that the Council of the Municipality of Swan Valley West hereby approves the following payments. Indemnities for February, number 4568 to 4576, the amount of $11,158.73. Is there someone to move the resolution? Councillor Burek and someone to second. Councillor Zabrun. Copy and indemnities are attached to the agenda in the public view for anyone to take a peek if they want. Does anyone have questions or concerns on any of the listings tonight? Councillor Zabrun. I see I forgot to mark in my hours for the fire board. <coughs> Go over rectify that. Yeah, put them on. Yeah, just, just make yeah, sure you notice yeah. for the other I'll month. Put We'll fix that up for you. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, council note tonight you have pay stubs provided. Uh, so staff indicate you'll be getting pay stubs now every month just so you can see those deductions because we are, if you requested it, we're taking income tax off of that for you. <coughs> if you didn't request it, then you won't be seeing that part. Anything else at all for the indemnities? Hearing nothing, we'll call the question. Those in favor? That's carried. Uh, budget 2024, the capital planning, uh, we'll circle back to that at the end of the night if we have some time. If we don't, we'll do another special meeting to finish off the budget. But 642, the public hearing date. Uh, our suggestions are um, April 26th is an LUD meeting in Benito. Uh, so we have the water rates to talk about in Benito, plus the public hearing stuff. And then the suggestion of April 23rd for Swan River. Would those be workable dates to be doing public hearings for the budget? The 23rd is our regular council night, so we just do it at the beginning of the council meeting. And the 16th is the off night. I think we will. 
we can start, we have to advertise it for at least two weeks. So we don't have to have that bylaw passed until the 22nd of April. So that still gives us three full weeks to finish. So we're almost there. And then we easily make the deadline this year. We will do the other part of this, like you said, if not today, then next week. Sometime. I think so, yeah. Because we also have to deal with that meeting when some of us are away. So we're thinking if we cancel that and go to a special meeting next week for budgeting, that would make up that night and still get the budget done on time. What do you see is on the 26th of what? So 16th oh. is the lead meeting in Benito. Okay. So the suggestion is that we would go there and present the budget and then come here one week later and present the budget. So we have both places so people don't have to drive so far. And then in Benito, we'll have water rates to present at the same time. Whereas here, that won't really matter. Is that agreeable to everybody for the dates? Is it workable? Yep. So. Okay. So we'll have staff advertise those in the paper. Uh, we'll try and have them out next week so we get the proper notice in for the one. Technically, we only have to have the notice for the 23rd one. The 16th is a bonus meeting, but we'll notice both of them in the paper. Uh, correspondence tonight, 7-1, sorry. Hmm? 7 -10. Oh, thank you. So 7-10. It's a good thing I have an alarm clock. <laughs> Uh, we have the possibility that we're holding a kennel license application. Now, we didn't hear back from anyone that they were coming, but is anybody here to talk about kennel licenses tonight for either one of the ones that are on the agenda? Not so much? Okay. Um, we didn't, like, it was an optional date, so we, we sent out some notification letters that it needed to be tonight or else it was too late. So we sort of put them on the agenda tonight just in case anyone came so we didn't have to try and squeak it in so we'll keep going and if somebody shows up a little later we'll still make it work for them uh, let's move to seven one correspondence uh, so attached to the agenda is a copy of a letter from our good friend Ian Bushy who is the minister these days uh, for municipalities municipal relations it says dear Bill Gade I'm pleased to inform you that your municipality has been approved to receive a funding contribution of up to five hundred thousand dollars for the Benito Fire Station Replacement Project under the Municipal Economic Development Infrastructure Program, MEDIP, administered by the Department of Municipal and Northern Relations. Uh, the letter goes on to say, and I'll paraphrase, that we must return the funding agreement before March 27th. I can advise council has been returned prior to the deadline and that the government will be forwarding the entire payment to us in the next couple of days uh, because they wish to have it expended before the end of their budget, which ends on Friday. Uh, so they are sending the money. We have to have it spent by the end of 2026 or we have to return it. But we earn the interest on it while it's in our bank account. So that in itself will help out the cause quite a bit. Well, you're marking that money or put in a reserve or whatever. Well, it'll go to emergency replacement reserve or whatever we call that thing because it, it has to go to that fire hall yep. or else it has to go back. Uh, later in the meeting, we have a copy of the actual agreement to review as well but this is just a notification letter so far. So uh, congratulations, folks, because like it's $500,000 the government's giving us for that, that we don't have to tax for. That's, it's very good news. And the fire truck and home will get a million dollars. Not good. bad, eh? That's pretty good. Not bad. Uh, anything else on that? We'll move on to 8.1, video LED service plan. So we reviewed this a little bit uh, at budget night, but we have the resolution tonight and then we can debate it some more if we need. Whereas the video LED committee has presented the 2024 service plan to the council of the municipality of Swan Valley West, whereas council has met with the video LED committee for budget discussions, therefore be it resolved that the council of the municipality of Swan Valley West accept the 2024 video LED service plan as presented. Is there someone to move the resolution? Councillor Kushner and someone to second the resolution. Councillor McGregor. Is there any discussion on this tonight? Councillor Basha. How can the garbage go from 40,000 to 6,500? Because so last year they budgeted 40 and this year it's 6,500. So a couple things at play here. Do you want to try to answer that yourself or do you want me to take a stab at it? Uh, well, I mean, what we based it on this year is just basically on man hours times a couple of men times the 52 weeks of X amount of hours per week times 52 weeks. Prior, it was all being forced upon the LUD, so they were paying all the expenses of a man. The entire staffing was done differently, so it was just based on a percentage of wages 
for a total year, which they aren't spending doing garbage, plus the cost of a truck, plus, 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 plus. So now it's based solely on hours spent. So are they pushing this truck or are they putting gas in it? Gas. And who's paying for that? It's at large. It's the same gas that runs up to Bozeman or Kenville or anywhere else. Anybody else for the discussion? How about rec and utility too there? Last year they had 2500 for the rec center utility, none this year? Last year it was discussed that it wouldn't be back in there again. Okay. That was discussed with the rec board as well. Is this because of the dumpsters all over the, the place? So the dumpsters are seen as depot collections, the same as Bozeman or uh, the Benito landfill. So the dumpsters aren't specifically charged to any one rate payer. Um, in Benito, though, we do pick up at individual houses. So those folks then are charged for the pickup, the cost of going around. Part of what's happened in Benito is because we've cut it from two days to one day, and we've become more efficient. So it used to take us almost the whole day on Monday. We'd make several trips to the landfill. Now we don't. With the truck, they only load once and go to the landfill one time. So they save quite a bit of time. So where it used to take seven or eight hours some days, we're down to two hours to run through Benito, which has made a big difference. And then by not doing the Friday either, the dumpsters have helped that because with the commercial garbage now, the issue with commercial is they couldn't do once a week because it would be full again. So commercial is actually Mondays and Fridays. The dumpsters are big enough, they're able to put the whole week of garbage in, so we only have to go one time. So these people that are charged for the pickup, are they charged on their taxes? Do they take you budget for... That's what this $6,500 is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. that's what I thought it was for the labor, for the man doing the work. That's that's the mill rate that will go to the LUD. I'm not sure what your question is. I'm misunderstanding. Well, you're so. charging these people for their garbage pickup, the one you pick up from the curb, right? Yes. So where is that on here? That's the 6,500. See if, if Benito went... that are picking it up, where is that on here? That is the 6, That's the 6,500. Like if we, if we went to this. dumpsters, like if we put like the recycle, if we just put dumpsters in a spot and people went and dumped their garbage themselves in there, then we wouldn't have the 6,500. Because that's offered in Kenville, it's offered in Bozeman, or uh, yeah, Bozeman. If offered in Alpine, not currently. It's offered no. in Durban, Kenville, Durban. and well, we should look into that because I mean, if it's offered all over the place and sixty-five hundred dollars, so for sixty-five hundred, you want us to go door to door in Alpine? Well, <laughs> I mean, forty thousand dollars one year down to sixty. <coughs> that's why I'm just asking the question. I want to know. What Anyways, okay. the other thing at play is the LUD paid for the truck. So they put the $50,000 in to purchase the truck and the dumpsters. And the dumpsters they paid for, of course, being used in the other places. So there's a little bit of trading back and forth there. There's no one at large paid for the dumpsters. Anything else tonight on this resolution? We're ready for the vote then. We'll call the question those in favor. Those opposed? I'm just make sure I think I saw everybody already. There's no abstained. Okay, so it was carried. Moving to number nine one, municipal economic development infrastructure program. So this is the agreement we were speaking about a few minutes ago from the letter. So a copy of the entire agreement's attached. Uh, this was signed by the CIO and returned. Uh, so this is 14 pages of all the nuts and bolts of how this works. The important parts is that the completion date is December 31st, 2026, unless we request permission for an extension, um, that we must accept the money now and hold it until we use it for this project. We can't use it on anything else. If we end up not using it on the project, we must return it. And there's also some notes in here about the eligible costs. So there's a list of what is eligible and what is not. Um, what doesn't show up here particularly well is any funding formula. So at one point when we made the application, we thought it might be one-third, one-third, one-third. Um, when we spoke to them, they indicated half and half, but that's not actually in the agreement that we can see either. Uh, so as long as we expend all of that money on the project, it's ours to use. 
Uh, now, obviously, we won't get the fire hall built for that much, but we don't have to spend the possible 1.5 million. If we spend a million dollars on a fire hall, that's okay. There's no requirement to spend all the way up to the maximum amount. And when we filled out the grant paperwork, we looked at what it was today, and we looked at the idea it might be a year before we build it. And we added 20% in case construction costs get crazy again. The hope has always been we build it for a lot cheaper than the maximum amount. But the agreement's there. Does anyone have any questions or discussion on the agreement? The province has not yet chosen to release this by press release, uh, but it's not a secret. So we're talking about it in the open tonight. At some point, the province will likely hold an announcement and we may be asked to attend. But if that happens, we'll be in touch. Probably before the end of the week, do you think? Or? There's nothing scheduled for the end of the week and their budget comes out on the 2nd of April. So it's possible they're just not going to get to it. But in any case, whether they announce it or not, money's there. Anything else on that item? If not, let's move into number 9-2. Uh, this one's a, kind of a multi-point thing. We received a letter from the Durban Cemetery Committee. Uh, so as council will recall, we've been following along. The Durban Cemetery Board had kind of uh, run out of people. They've had a couple meetings now. They've established a new board and they're functioning again. Uh, so as we've discussed previously, they intend to erect a sign for the Durban Community Cemetery. So in the letter, they're informing us that to date, they have $850 of donations. Uh, they do have, I believe it was 15,000 roughly in their bank account right now. So if there's a shortfall on the sign, they're going to cover it from their bank account. Uh, secondary concern they had was the cemetery building. So there's a small shed out there where they keep the tools for the cemetery and a few other things. Um, the letter indicates that the building looks to be beyond repair at reasonable cost. Indicates the board intends to construct a new facility that will meet future needs. They're still working on the plans for that building and we'll submit them for approval. Uh, they know nothing's conclusive yet, but there's some indication there may be a donor for the construction materials and likely also the labor. Uh, without a donor though, they feel the costs will come from the cemetery cash on hand. I did have one cemetery board member come in to see me, must be Friday, Thursday, Friday, he was, <coughs> um, and he was wondering if maybe they could still save the old building uh, he was asking some questions about how the insurance works on the building. Uh, so I think they were going to have a little more discussion yet on whether they were building new or trying to save the old. The old one doesn't have a foundation. It sits on the ground. So um, we'll leave that to them. I don't think we need to micromanage how they make their cemetery look beautiful. Uh, but they'll be in touch. Uh, I did explain to them the deductible on the insurance because they were wondering if it was covered. But the reality is the deductible is so high for us that it's unlikely any shed they would build would ever be more than the deductible. So essentially it's uninsured, but uh, their concern was if a tornado happened to come through and take the building away. I said, I'm sure we as a council would find a solution for that if it was to happen. Uh, number three, they're speaking about a columbarium. Uh, so they don't have one now. Uh, they've been doing cremations just in regular plots, uh, but they are looking at the idea of a columbarium. They don't have the money for this. So they're asking that we give consideration to spending $18,750 to buy a 24 unit columbarium. Uh, it would then be cost recovered over time by people that used it. So each spot in it would cost $1,250. So the municipality would end up getting the $30,000 back. Um, and we would have to decide if we were keeping that for other uses or if we were assigned to that to the cemetery trust fund. But that's a decision for down the road. Um, we haven't budgeted anything for this this year, and I don't know if it would need to be this year, but it's certainly a request they want us to consider. And the other request is the actual name of the cemetery. We spoke about that uh, at a previous meeting. So at current, the cemetery is known as the Durban Joint Stock Cemetery, and they have requested a name change to the Durban Community Cemetery. So tonight we have a resolution prepared for that name change but not for any financial contributions for the columbarium. Uh, so a little discussion, if you please, first. Does anyone have thoughts on first the columbarium and if we should be doing something there? Do they have numbers on how many cremations go in per year? Not that they've provided. That I'd be curious to know. I, from what I gather, it would be three or four. Like it's not a huge number and it might be less than three or four some years. 
So it would certainly it would last a while, but it would take a while to get the money back too. Something that's getting more and more popular. Mm -hmm. It is with the cost so high. That's what more people are opting for. And certainly we could, you know, this is for Durban, but we manage the Benito Cemetery as well. Um, you know, Benito is a more popular cemetery. We could always have that same discussion for whether we should be doing something like this in Benito as an option for people. So is it all right if we leave that with you to think about for a little while? Yeah, I don't know. We can squeak it in this year's budget. Certainly we could look for it for next year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on to point two, the name change. Does anyone have strong concerns with that? Last time it was generally indicated we didn't. Let's go for the resolution for that then. Where is the cemetery located at Northeast 20, 34, 28 West in the municipality of Swan Valley West and known as Durban Joint Stock Cemetery was for many years managed by a group of volunteers from the community. And whereas over the years, that group of volunteers are no longer able to volunteer their time or are no longer with us. And whereas a group of concerned members of the community have joined together to form a newly elected board, including a chairperson, a secretary treasurer and two trustees, and whereas the newly elected board have requested a, name, a change of name to the cemetery to better reflect the administration and care of the cemetery is by locals in the spirit of community, therefore be it resolved that the cemetery previously known as Durban Joint Stock Cemetery be renamed and now known as Durban Community Cemetery. Is there someone that would like to make the resolution? Is move the resolution, sorry. Councillor Neely. Is there someone that would like to second? Councillor Blasha? Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. Those in favor? That's carried. <coughs> 9 3, Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission budget. A copy of the budget is attached. Uh, we'd heard the number before, but the actual budget is here now. Be it resolved that the Council of the Municipality of Swan Valley West received the 2024 budget of the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission. And be it further resolved that the levy of $45,220 be added to the 2024 budget. Is there someone to move the resolution? Councillor Burek. Anyone to second the resolution? Councillor Kushnerik. Any discussion? And we have a couple. I want to say that hey, based on assessment, the minute bonuses ain't darn near as much as the dollars on the road. <coughs> Did we not discuss this before about per capita and assessment combination or something? So there's been some history to this. Um, the airport commission has spent several years uh, having this discussion yeah. of whether it should be assessment per capita. Uh, at one point, Minotonis Bozeman served notice they would be leaving the airport commission unless it was changed to per capita. Um, they then rescinded that notice since the last election. I attended one airport commission meeting, uh, maybe for I you. Didn't make it. Yeah, I was going to one. Uh, so that night, we entertained the discussion again because it's been a continual agenda item, and I was a little grumpy that night. Uh, I said, "This is a waste of time. We have spent 50, 60 hours debating this over the years, and the airport commission can't change the agreement. The only people that can is council, because the airport commission cannot change that themselves." They need the councils to change it. So I brought a resolution that night that the airport commission would stop debating it and would instead go back to their individual councils and say, if you want to change, the council needs to spend their time debating this. Um, so that passed. And part of that was we had a look at what it would cost the other way. So we had the finance folks draw up what it would be if it was only by population and Minotonis was there, uh, Mr. Walmsley, and I said, so look at the difference. It's, I forget if it was three or $4,000. And I said, is it worth it for three or $4,000 to keep talking about this every single time? And he said, no, it's not. And I said, okay, then we'll leave it there. If somebody, us or them or anybody else wants to make the change, we'll do it at the council table and we'll send a letter to the other councils. But the airport commission, they simply can't, like they, they can't change it. So all that debate that's gone on there for years hasn't accomplished anything. If we want to make change, and we can, you know, I think here in Minotonis has some strong feelings on the assessment population shifts. 
of what it should be. If we want to go down that path, we absolutely can. But we should do it here, not at the airport commission table. Yeah, I don't know how much of a difference it would make to us. I mean, it's I think for us, it was a few thousand dollars, too. It wasn't a huge amount, just because the overall budget is so low. If it was a higher budget, yeah, right. it would make big, more and more issues. Anyway, the, they're in, in the process of putting a card lock system in out there for everybody knows. And then you won't have these call out figures on there. They pay somebody to go up there and fuel a plane up for somebody. Any questions or other discussion? Hearing nothing, we'll call the question of the resolution. Those in favor? That's carried. Uh, tonight we have an RCMP report. Be resolved the report from the RCMP be accepted as received. Is there a mover? Councillor Krishnerik, someone to second the resolution. Councillor Zabrun. Uh, so, copy of the report is there for council to peruse. You have to kind of spin it around to get to see it easily. It shows in January 7, provincial traffic offenses in February 23. So, I'd assume traffic services was out in February harassing people. Uh, two impaired operation of a motor vehicle, one in January, one in February. Um, provincial statutes uh, that were not traffic, three in January, seven in February. Municipal bylaws, one each January and February. And I have to admit, I don't know what those calls were. Uh, we're not aware of them. Uh, Firearms Act concern in January. Uh, four national codes in February. Drug enforcement for trafficking, a call for that in January. Uh, two assaults in January, two assaults in February. One theft under $5,000 in January, four in February. Two theft over $5,000 in January, one over $5,000 in February. Two mischief each in each month, one fraud in each month. Two break and enter in February. Uh, common police activities, nine in January, five in February. Assistance to the public, which could be someone stuck on a road in a storm or such, four in January, one in February. For total calls for service in Swan Valley West, 34 in January, 56 calls for service in February. We've asked the RCMP to keep us in the report loop now so we see these calls again. Uh, for a while they had and then it stopped for a little while, but we should be seeing these reports more often now. Uh, it's also been suggested if we want, we could ask the staff sergeant to attend a meeting if we have questions. So if anyone develops interest in having them here to have a chat one night, uh, let us know and we can invite them on over. Any questions or discussion? Hearing nothing, we'll call the question on the resolution. Those in favor? That's carried. The sponsorship request. Uh, this was received minutes before our last meeting, so we deferred it to this agenda. Uh, so this request is from Martin and Jackie Snell, to whom it may concern we're preparing to hold an event at the Swan River Museum on June 1st. Salute to the 60s, an evening of memorable music by three local bands and well-loved musicians from the Swan River area. It's a fundraiser. Proceeds go to the Community Foundation of Swan Valley to benefit arts, music, and education. They're requesting sponsorship for the amount of $1,000 to help offset costs for the event, particularly the bands. But any amount would be appreciated. We'd be very grateful if you would consider this request, and we would proudly display a banner for your company. Uh, this is a form letter. Uh, it was distributed to practically every business in the Swan River area. Thoughts tonight? Does Council have any interest in sponsoring the event? Do we have some place in our budget where we have X number for grants or what? We have a little bit. Like last year we had from the, from Benito there and, and how much do we put away for that? I believe the answer is $15,000 total for the year. Has been in the past. Has been? Yeah, it was last year, and I'm sure that's what we left out this year. I'm just flipping through the budget here to see it. But I think the answer is 15 for yeah. all miscellaneous grants. I should probably be excused from this. Hold my fault and put it on. Oh, we can be. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we'll have the record show that Councillor McGregor has indicated he has a conflict of interest with this item, and he is leaving the meeting while discussion continues. I don't immediately see it, but I'm 99% sure it's 15,000 total. Did we go over it last year? Or? We did not. We stayed within it. Okay. 
We did well last year. We didn't spend that much. And this is our <coughs> this is our first request actually this year, or do we have this would be a new budget? This is our second. I believe yes. Was there yeah. something we gave a couple yeah. hundred dollars? We gave to the, we gave to the um, yeah. folk fest already. Yes. So I'm just oh, saying yeah. that's it's not the first request. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I don't know if it makes any difference to any of you, but I understand this is a licensed event. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but just so you can't afterwards say that you didn't know and cared. Mm -hmm. And I believe I'm surprised I haven't seen a request for a community event designation yet, or maybe that's still coming. I thought we would have received one, but we <coughs> not. Uh, it, it's possible the museum is able to issue its own community event designations, so they may have issued it on our behalf. I like the fact that any proceeds will go to the community foundation. Would you like to suggest a grant? I would like to suggest a and what, dollar grant. Of course. I'll second it. So I have a resolution, be it resolved that the Council of Municipality of Swan Valley West approves support for the Salute to the 60s event being held at Swan, River, Swan Valley Historical Museum with a grant of $1,000. I have a mover of Councillor Neely and I have a seconder of Councillor Burek. Is there any further discussion on the resolution? Hearing nothing, we'll call the question. Those in favour? That is carried. 9-6. Swan River and District Community, oh sorry, Resource Council funding request, and we'll get Mr. Uh, McGregor back in the meeting before we continue on here as well. So records shall show that Councilor McGregor has returned to the meeting for the discussion of the next item. Letter has been received from the Swan River District Community Resource Council uh, proposing that all four towns and municipalities for ongoing funds for office operations. There's a description here of the group and their benefits to the community. Uh, they're also indicating their financial needs, uh, some discussion of what they pay for rent. Um, and they're saying we can call them if we want more information. Uh, there's a few programs that they run here. Uh, you'll recall last year they ran short of funding for coffee and a chat. We did contribute. Uh, a few hundred dollars to that last year. Uh, so the question to council again is if you wish to provide any funding to these folks. Do you remember what we gave last year? Or eight hundred dollars. I was going to be low on my guess. <laughs> well, there's no doubt that's a good thing they're doing. Being a senior myself, I can relate. <laughs> What's the feeling of the rest? So this is, I wonder if they would include, like, they have a walking program and all that. Would they pick that up in Benito like this? No. I doubt it. I know, but I'm just saying it's on there. Mm -hmm. That may well be the same walking program. That we're already paying for this, then. Yeah, that's what I mean. We're already paying for a walking program. It's in here. Mm -hmm. So we can move forward on this tonight, or we could table it and wait two weeks and come back at it again. What's what do we want to do? No, we don't have to table it. I was just wondering. Three hundred dollars. Hey, so it's a suggestion eight hundred. Yeah. I know. Isn't that what you said? We that's what we did last year. Yeah. Last year it wasn't for the general funding. It was that one one of case they came to us for. Maybe we should add inflation into there. Just make it a somebody thousand as well. A, I'm going to call out on somebody else. Oh, well, listen. Does anyone wish to stick their hand up and make a suggestion for what you'd like? Oh, okay, go a thousand on this one as well. Same as last one. Don't worry, we will tell you when you run out of money. And then you can <laughs> <laughs> take up donations around the table before you grant anything else. <laughs> Be resolved, the Council of the Municipality of Swan Valley West approve a grant of $1,000 to the Swan River District Resource Council to support various services to seniors. Uh, moved by Councillor Kushnerik. Is there someone to second the resolution? Uh, I see Councillor Neely. I'm sorry, Councillor Zabruin was in there first. Uh, further discussion on the resolution? Hearing nothing, we'll call the question. Those in favour? You guys are big spenders tonight. I'm not spending no more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nine seven. 
Whereas arrangements are made each spring to recall seasonal workers to the new season, and whereas the employee was contacted to make such an arrangement, and whereas administration was informed the employee wished to give notice of his resignation effective immediately, March 15, 2024, therefore be it resolved that the resignation be accepted as given from D. Harabachuk. Is there someone to move the resolution? Councillor Neely, is there a seconder? Councillor Blasha. Any discussion? On behalf of Council, we thank Mr. Habachuk for his years of service. He certainly uh, did a good job for us mowing, and uh, we wish him well in his future endeavours. We'll call the question. Those in favour? That's carried. Dust control tender. A copy of the draft dust control tender is attached tonight for Council to review. Uh, so this looks very different than it did the other years. Uh, we're suggesting this tender will close April 16th. It will be issued in the coming day or so, as long as Council doesn't have any concerns. Uh, so the tender provides for either liquid or dry dust control and also provides for the purchase of bulk dust control. To that last point, uh, Council recall a document that looked like this that Council Zabrun brought us uh, that speaks about using dust control material to stabilize roads. Uh, so the bulk quote is in there so that we could possibly try this. Uh, with that, some of those roads we're looking at, uh, with incorporating dust control and multi layers like this. Well, this was, this was, but it doesn't necessarily mean they have to come do it because the chemical is the same chemical we use already. So, you know, certainly the process of how they do it. So, we thought we'd seek a quote to see what the stuff was worth in bulk, just to, you know, without going and custom applying it in case we wanted to go and try it on some road. On ourselves, on ourselves. Yeah, we were thinking that some of those roads, if we're going to build up several <laughs> layers of gravel on them, put the gravel, put the dust control, put the gravel, put the dust control, put the gravel, put the dust control. So there's three layers of it in there, and it should stick really well. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of a slightly cheaper version of what they're doing because they rotivate it in, yeah. but it would be similar. No. We don't have to make a decision tonight. That's why it's in there for the bulk purchase of it in addition to the regular stuff. So we have the option once the tender comes back. Um, I think council knows, but just to review, we now have th the one that did the application last year, which has for several years for distributors, but we have two local vendors interested in bidding on the contract uh, for dust control. And they were back and forth about whether it would be liquid or whether it would be dry. Um, so we do have the specs for doing it either way to make sure they would conform to something like that. But that's why the tender was left open uh, to try and get as much local interest as we could to give some flexibility in how it's done. And they have the storage facilities from the project. At least one of them does, perhaps both. Mm -hmm. One of them I know is looking at liquid and would actually purchase it from a place and then bring it and put it on. So it would be just the labor they were providing locally, whereas the other one I think would be purchasing dry product and then oh, doing well, something with it here. Is, but I'm thinking, you know, where they hold, where they put it now, right? Yeah. Maybe they wouldn't be able to use those. Well, not. Uh, apparently they do sell wholesale of those tanks. Oh. So there was some discussion that the one vendor may purchase wholesale product and have it stored in there. Oh. So we'll leave that up to them. Yeah, we'll so see what they can come up with for pricing. Is there a date for it has to be applied by or not? So it isn't specifically in here, but we certainly want it sooner yeah. rather than later. Right. Um, yeah. Before seeding, not after. That would be ideal. So. Yeah. Where are we at? Hmm? Where are we advertising? I'm thinking just the website and then send it to the people we know are interested. If that's okay with everybody. There's one in Brandon, there's one in Winnipeg. I think we'd send it to both of them. We'd send it to the two local people and put it on the website. If that's agreeable. Okay. Anything else in the dust control? Uh, 99, the gravel supply and crushing. You've seen this before. It came back. All that's changed here is the percentage was put in the H12%. We're intending to release this in the next day or so as well, again with a due date of April 16th. Does anyone have questions or concerns on that tender? Okay. Advertise the same way? Same way. We'll just send it to a few more places though. But we did, we ran an ad in the paper saying these tenders were coming out and to keep watching for them. So it's not that we haven't done something in the paper. Yeah. We're just trying to limit the $200 for each and everything. Each last, time. Last year we only had one tender, right? Mm -hmm. well, we're hoping to scare up a couple more. We've been talking to some previous suppliers uh, to see if they would be interested in bidding again. 
with um, some promise of things being different. If everyone's okay, we'll move to 910. Uh, so as council knows, the Public Utilities Board has uh, required that we submit a full rate application by April 1st. Uh, so staff has certainly been busy on this. I have been busy on this. I've been annoying staff on this as I get them to put all the information together on it. Uh, so a couple things attached here. There's a draft of the rate application that needs to go in yet this week. Uh, and there's still possibly a few changes to it, but for the most part, the numbers are getting to be pretty solid. Um, so included in that is most of what will be submitted. The synopsis is in there, as well as the calculation pages that were provided to us by the Public Utilities Board. So those have been populated with the 2021 audited numbers, the 2023 actual numbers, 2024 estimates, and then auto-generated estimates for 25, 26, and 27, showing 2% inflation. One of the requirements is that we provide reading of a bylaw, first reading. So tonight we have bylaw number 0108-24 prepared for council. There isn't much change to this bylaw from the previous one, so I'll run over the changes. Uh, what is added here is a section that establishes in the bylaw when we do billing um, so that it's clear to make sure we know what those billing dates are and get them done. So we make sure we do four each year. Um, otherwise, uh, it provides that we can uh, limit or discontinue water to fountains, jets, hoses, and sprinklers, uh, which was recommended by the previous consultant that that be there in case we should be facing a water shortage or we could tell people they couldn't have a fountain. Although I'm not aware of any fountains in Benito, but these things could happen, I suppose. Um, it provides for the fire hydrants to only be used by designated representatives or without permission. We have to do that because some of the fire hydrants do not drain on their own. So if they've been used, we have to pump them out. And we need to know that's happened or else they freeze solid and it's not good for a fire hydrant. Um, everything else here is as it was in the previous, except in number seven. Uh, so added here to the possibility of a summary conviction for $1,000. Is that council's option? Violations may proceed as administrative monetary penalties under the bylaw enforcement bylaw. Eagle-eyed readers will know we do not yet have a bylaw enforcement bylaw, uh, but that's on our books to get done this year. So we're putting it in here so that once it exists, we can refer matters under the bylaw to that enforcement rather than the old traditional way of taking somebody to court, which is getting to be a, quite a process. Um, what would somebody do then? So the bylaw concerns would be, for example, if you had a major water leak in your <coughs> property and wouldn't allow us in to turn the water off. Oh, you know, um, the bylaw provides that we can get in for checking the meter to make sure you haven't gone around the meter. And if you won't let us in to see that, we can fine you for not coming in. I don't know of any time we have ever exercised. It would be so rare, but I suppose it could happen. So it's there in case. Uh, you'll notice some parts of the bylaw say it comes into force on month, day, year. Those will be filled in once the Public Utilities Board provides some direction on when the bylaw will take effect. Uh, further into the bylaw is Schedule A. Uh, so that is the water rates as calculated by the Public Utilities Board. They have a workbook that we've gone through and put all the stuff in. Uh, so it provides an increase for water, a slight decrease for wastewater. Uh, these are very similar to the rates we looked at before. And the basis for them is all in that other document that explains them all. Just because we submit them does not mean the Public Utilities Board approves them this way. If we've done everything absolutely perfect in our calculations, they would stamp this. Otherwise, they will send us back all new numbers to replace in here saying, well, you didn't think about this and you didn't add this number right. Uh, so that's why it's only first reading. After first reading, it goes to them. And only once they've approved everything does it come back to us for second and third reading with what they've said they will approve. So this may still change, hopefully not by much. This I provides... I'd like to get tired of dealing with us. I would hope. <laughs> the sooner they get tired of us, the better. They could just say, hi, as you were. <laughs> this provides for the deficit rate rider of $2.54 per thousand gallons to continue. Uh, commencing month day year again, although it's already in effect. So it may just be continual until the deficit's recovered. Uh, the next thing we have on our agenda tonight is the deficit from 2021 to recover. Everything from five on is as written from the previous bylaw that we had passed. So those are all just copied over. You can even tell by the text, it looks copied and pasted. It's not quite the same font. 
Does anyone have discussion on this? If not, I have a resolution, whereas the Public Utilities Board has requested a full rate application for the video water utility, and whereas the previous application by the former council has now been abandoned, be it resolved that bylaw number 010824, being a bylaw to regulate the rates and services of the video water utility, be read this 26th day of March 2024 for a first time. Is there a mover? Councillor Krishner, someone to second the resolution. That be great. <laughs> Any further discussion on the resolution tonight? Hearing nothing, we'll call the question. Those in favor? That is carried. 911, water utility deficit. Uh, as you know, if the water utility runs a deficit, we must seek approval from the Public Utilities Board. Now that we have finalized our 2021 audited financials, we can say there is definitely a deficit in 2021. Uh, so we prepared a resolution. A copy of the deficit application is attached. We are required by resolution to say how we wish to recover it. Uh, so the proposed solution here is that we will continue collecting that deficit rate rider until it's paid off. Whereas the video water utility was operated in such a manner during 2021 that it incurred a large deficit. And whereas the Public Utilities Board requires that municipalities seek approval for deficit amounts and state their intention to recover the deficit, be it resolved that the municipality of Swan Valley West make application to the Public Utilities Board to approve the 2021 audited deficit of $52,158 and be it further resolved that the deficit is to be recovered through the existing IMG $2.54 per thousand gallon rate rider that is already in effect. Is there someone to move the resolution? Councillor Neely and someone to second the resolution. Councillor Blasha. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. Those in favor? That is carried. I read that whole thing, believe it or not. Good job. <laughs> I don't remember much, but <laughs> good job. <laughs> 9 12. Uh, uh, the April 9th meeting date. That conflicts, the April 9th meeting date. That conflicts with AMM, and some of us are away. Uh, we've been having some discussion uh, around the table informally about what to do with that meeting date. It doesn't work particularly well to move it. We're wondering if Council is of the opinion we could cancel the meeting and in its place likely hold a special meeting for budgeting uh, a little before that, probably the week before. Would that be something that might be agreeable to the group? So you mean we won't have a regular meeting until the 23rd then? Right. Because That's pretty long. Well, anything that, anything that comes up, Ryan, between now, between now and then, we could put on that meeting, right? We could, meeting. Yeah. Meeting. On a special meeting? On. Okay, what are you planning on a special so, meeting? Well, sometime before, uh, likely next week, next to finish the budget. Week. See, it's on the 9th, so if we move it, we go to the 2nd, so we're only seven days until the next meeting. And there's really not going to be enough to justify that. And if we delay it to the 16th, that's the night of the public hearing in Benito. Right. But then even if we did, then the next meeting is the 23rd. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, like, it just, it makes them so close we're together. Close this way or close this yeah. way? Yeah. So, you know, what's most pressing is finishing the budget. Yeah. And certainly yeah. we could add, if there's anything comes up in the next couple of days, we could add it to the special meeting. Mm -hmm. But rather than having a full meeting with all of this stuff, I think we're better off doing the special meeting where we just do the budget and anything that came up. Well, what was the fourth? What day is that? Third? Fourth? That's Thursday? Thursday? Not Thursday. Thursday. Any day but a Thursday. Oh, no, 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 the Thursdays, Thursday. I have on. You're off Thursday? No, I have another commitment every Thursday. Oh, okay. evening. So. Well, can be April 26th. That's a little late. What's that, uh, what's that Valentine's Day? Day? No, <laughs> anniversary. Anniversary. Your anniversary. My anniversary. Oh so, my God, there's something all the time. Here's the possible conflicts. <laughs> April, April 2nd is the accommodation bylaw hearing at the town of Swan River, uh, which we're not required to attend, but if anyone has strong opinions and wants to go, that would be a conflict. The 3rd of April is medical recruitment committee night. Um, Actually, no, I don't, you know, I, that's, well, it says it is here. I showed us a 6 p.m. meeting, but I believe that's been changed, maybe, to a trip to Dauphin that day to go see some folks. Uh, but it's possible conflict there, but the Tuesday would probably be the most agreeable. If, the second? Yeah, it would be the second. You're closing the first rate? Yes. Yes. 
choose the day it is. Give you prep time. Prep time. Enough prep time for the second? Yeah. I think, because we were ready to go the other night. The only reason we stopped is it got to be 10 yeah, o'clock. Yeah. And, you know, if you're here at 11 o'clock at night looking at numbers, yeah. are we really doing anybody a service? No, second's good. Okay. Yeah, so we'll good. go to the second? No, I was just joking about the 26. I know that's way far ahead. I just, want, I just wanted to throw Did you say one. seven? I think seven, seven, if that works for everybody. Seven o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Seven o'clock on the second. Yeah. Second at seven o'clock. Be resolved that the regular meeting of council for April 9th, 2024 shall be cancelled, and in its place a special budget meeting will be held April 2nd, 2024 at 7 p.m. Is there a mover for the resolution? Mr. Burek, someone to second the resolution. Hold oh, my. <laughs> the whole east side. <laughs> I think <laughs> Councillor McGregor is usually so shy over there. Any further discussion? Hearing nothing, we'll call the question. Those in favor? It's carried. I'm not sure. Oh, sir. Since we're talking about meetings, are we having a transportation meeting or is that still not planned? We probably could get one scheduled for you. Yeah. Yep. Well, it would be nice to have one close to spring. Are you agreeable to daytime or do you still want evening? Anytime. Okay, so we'll blame for a daytime yeah, maybe next week. Yeah. Can you ping Public Works and see if they're available next week for? Uh, are you available Thursday mornings or is Thursday yeah, all day or fine. for you? No, oh, for it's only in the evenings. Okay, so morning would be okay. Yeah. So maybe see if Thursday morning is agreeable for Mr. Uh, Scott to attend. So that's the fourth. Okay. Yeah. That's the fourth? Yes. I should probably put that in here before. You usually say 10? Usually 10. Yeah. 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 Okay, I don't see any unfinished business left tonight. We move the water stuff up to the discussion. So we go to number 11, committee reports uh, and communications. We'll start with Councillor Burek. Okay, well, I attended, the, Terry and I, we attended the airport commission meeting. We almost discussed most of it already. We passed the budget already, so I mean, there's not too much more to inform about that one. And then uh, I attended the truth and consequences function. <laughs> Truth and reconciliation. <laughs> Truth and reconciliation. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be thoughts of that. If you missed the meeting for your anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> Truth and reconciliation. <laughs> Anything else to report? I'm not just supposed to. Councillor Blosh. I can't go from here. <laughs> I attended a, a safety meeting. It was a very good meeting. I feel like we're starting to get on track and start again and same thing I <laughs> I attended the G8 meeting how about that <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, anything else no, no. councillor uh, uh, I attended the rink committee meeting and LED committee we discussed uh, obviously our budget a little bit the splash pads more and possible fall event and some info on the annual garage sale that they do and one more just tickle my tongue oh budget meeting and Jeez. then last night the truth and reconciliation <laughs> i was at brian and i made up and we're talking now council is approved uh rec board uh, Meeting we had on the 11th, uh, budget, and then the G8 on the 25th. Councillor Neely. I think I've been covered. Airport Commission, the safety. Truth and Reconciliation, <laughs> the safety meeting. Councillor right. McGregor. Nothing to report. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, from CAO, any virtuous to serve tonight? <laughs> I'll get my list ready when you think about that. Settle in out there. <laughs> <laughs> Just been busy going round and round. And so, yeah, n nothing out of the usual. 
All right, uh, so myself, I have been, as you can imagine, fairly busy on the water rate application, uh, but that is almost done. We should be able to finish that off tomorrow morning, another hour or so, get the paperwork all collated. We have to mail them a copy and email them a copy, so that will hopefully all leave here tomorrow, worst case Thursday, because it has to be in Winnipeg by the first or they fine us. So we're going to make that deadline. Uh, I was at the reconciliation workshop last night. I hung around for a little bit after uh, to discuss um, just life with the presenter, uh, but I also spoke to the superintendent for a while and some of the school trustees just about their project and how it's going with the building at the high school there. So it seems to be progressing well. Uh, we talked a little bit of economic development and you know, with a facility like that, how we really need to try and get some more events to actually come and use it. Um, I attended our budget meeting, uh, which, I, by the way, I want to commend council. Uh, we did very well that night. We got through, we went line by line through the budget, and we got through everything except capital expenditures, which was good. Uh, everybody got along well, and there were some great questions asked and some great thought put into it, too. So I was really proud to see how what well we did with that. We had senior staff meeting earlier that same day, uh, so we met. Uh, most of that meeting was spent reviewing budgeting. Uh, we're still having some payroll discussions, and there's an item that's going to come to council on payroll. Um, uh, so I'll pre-warn you it's coming, but it's not going to be here for at least another meeting or two. Um, we're having trouble processing the payroll the way we've always done it, because the payroll is due on the 15th, including the hours worked on the 15th. So we're having to guess what hours are going to be worked on the 15th ahead of time. Uh, so there's a proposal that's being worked on that will see us resolve that. So we have a little bit of a window to get payroll processed, so we're processing the right hours and paying the right amount instead of guessing and going back and fixing. So that's to come. Uh, we had a safety meeting that day as well. That was in the morning. Um, so it was uh, went well. Chris has taken over sort of chairing the safety meeting. So we're doing a little encouraging on him to get him used to chairing meetings and get him into that role. Uh, and, you know, there's no secret that's part of teaching him some leadership because he's a young guy that's hopefully going to be here a while and get him used to leading uh, so he's more and more into that as time goes on because certainly he could be part of our plan for uh, continuity as time goes on when we have some older folks move on. To have someone young like that that learns those skills is important. I held a meeting uh, with a member of council on the Monday. That was a good meeting. We had a great talk. Um, we did some flooding uh, back on the 15th of March. Uh, council was aware of that, but it was actually not on our road. It was Highway 275. Uh, but we took care of those issues out there and the people are quite happy that we responded and um, I know Councillor Dealey was helping out there again with some issues a little a day or two later uh, so it's I think it was very good of us you know it's not technically our problem but it's our area and we need to make sure we look after people so we did good. Um, Minnetonas fire meeting that was before our last council right I think I reported on that so yeah I'm back to the beginning of where I last gave you a report. You come back to me now. Hmm? You come back to me now. You come back to me now. Oh, you have a thought yeah. now? Yeah. Oh, right away, Councillor Neely. <laughs> oh, getting back to this uh, little issue on the ditch road there. Uh, can we somehow be updated on contacts for highways branch? Because it's a helpless feeling when, when Ray Bear called me on a Friday night and I don't know what time, it was nine o'clock or something like that. Mm -hmm. He got the issues. I said, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. We can't really help you out. That's not our ditch. And if we go in there without permission, we could have some truth or consequences <laughs> <laughs> to worry about, you know. Mm -hmm. So if now I got that Thomas's number, so I can pass it out, but maybe everybody else can have his number too. So or so somebody's number. Probably the best route is we'll take a peek at our emergency plan and make sure it's in there, and then we'll distribute a copy. Because yeah, those are the, you know, there's more than just highways. There's a bunch of numbers that we might need yeah. to know, and those should all be in that plan, and I think we should all probably have a copy of it so we can it was deal with those issues. Feeling, you know? do, do we have numbers for private guys too? So if we can't get a hold of them, we can get them you know, to send there somebody. There are private you know, contractors, yeah, you know, contact information yeah. in the emergency plan, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. At least that you can find somewhere where you don't even know the guy's name. I mean, mm -hmm. how do you find this thing? Right? Well, it was, you make copies. Yeah, I spent quite a lot of time that night chasing until I found someone too. Well, didn't you go through the fire department yeah. to Winnipeg to 
So. Back to Roblin or something. <laughs> All over the place yeah. to get one guy's phone number. So, yeah. It's, uh, it would be a good thing to... Yeah. We'll see if we can get that done for you. Yeah. Okay, back to you. Yeah, you kind of caught me by surprise. So. I didn't have my little ducks in a row. Anyways, um, I had some um, questions and concerns. People are wondering about doctor clinics in Benito, which we used to have that service for many years. Um, the clinics were always very well attended. Um, and um, then I think it was around about the time of COVID that ceased, as a lot of other things did, and hasn't been um, uh, restarted since then. And so um, I chased down um, a couple of people and ended up talking to a gal at uh, Pre Mountain Health. Uh, <clears throat> and she said that they certainly um, uh, are happy to hear that, that the municipality is interested in um, restarting those clinics, but at this point in time they don't feel that they have the resources like as in doctors or nurse practitioners to uh, facilitate that, but um, I stress the importance of it and you know I mean every community has the aging uh, community, uh, the residents and stuff uh, who really really appreciated that because many of them have to hire somebody to drive them into Swan River for medical appointments, whereas um, in Benito it's much easier to get that. So anyways, um, I told her to keep us on the radar and keep us informed if there was any change in that, so she promised that she would. Um, I also um, spent a bit of time on a webinar about agriculture jugs um, and the, the pesticides and fertilizers and things like that that uh, we constantly get uh, calls about in the office here, people wanting to know how and where to dispose of them. And um, so they had this program that is sort of evolving and, and changing. And so they're going full f um, bore on uh, implementing this um, in Manitoba. And so I spent about um, the course of an hour on that this morning. And um, they're going to be providing us with um, locations and stuff, which is uh, helpful for us to have the answers when people phone. Uh, because um, I don't know if there's any of the sites that collect them anymore, or accept them, I should say, not collect them. Um, was the last no, one, wasn't it? Yeah. Hmm? Derby was, was the last one. Derby was the last one, wasn't it? Most yeah. of those jugs now, they, they come in bulk, so you take back the container that you got it in and you get your deposit back. Well, and most, most of them. But yeah. That's just our experience. And so have you been made aware of um, on-farm collection sites? No. Yeah, that's something that they're I'm talking not sure about. Yet. Not so sure. anyways, um, that's just um, something that um, is um, in the works and so we'll keep informed on that because I think that as counselors, many of you might be getting those questions as well, so try and get the answers. So do we have to put an application for them? Or, I mean, they close down Durban, like, how do we get another site? Like, they don't... They tell us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Could be in Roblo. It could be. The, the nearest one right now is uh, south of Russell. Well, yeah, so... Yeah, but they, they're uh, continuing working on making uh, more sites available because obviously <clears throat> anybody north of Swan River, I mean even south of Swan River here, like to go down um, south of Russell is quite a bit like. Yeah. yeah. And then just further to your mention of um, the safety <clears throat> committee and Chris working as a rep, I um, have been helping him out by preparing him a binder with all the information and stuff and so he uh, I picked up the, the safety plan that we had prepared last year for that. <clears throat> uh, so uh, he's working away at getting up to speed on that. Did so. we not have a, did the previous lady in the office have a big folder of stuff? Yeah, there? it was two binders. Oh, that's what you're talking yeah. about? Or? No, I'm talking about the plan that we had um, hired someone to prepare for us last year. Because oh, okay. the one that we yeah. had previous uh, was outdated and, yeah, okay. was not acceptable to workplace safety and health. Okay, I was thinking, no. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. Yep, sit. Uh, the only thing I will share is that I did have an informal meeting with uh, a member of Manitoba's Bozeman Council to further discuss the fire concerns that have come up. And it sounds like there's some movement that they will be providing a list of their concerns now uh, to the other municipalities and there will be a meeting to come. Probably a committee meeting to begin with, a couple reps from each municipality to start to see if we can work something out and then come to the larger councils after that to see if we can get some movement and get a plan together because I think everybody's had a little time to cool down and remember that the most important thing is saving lives. So I think I think we'll see some movement on that, which is good. Mutually for them. So, any further things for committee reports tonight or any other communications? Um, so for the gallery's benefit, what we normally do is we take a break and then we go in camera. So we do all our in camera stuff at the end. Then we come out of in camera usually an hour or two from now. And if anything comes up from those resolutions, we pass them there on the tape and you see them on the video. You're welcome to stay also, but not there. You know, it's like, <laughs> um, <laughs> most people don't, but sometimes people want to. Uh, we do traditionally though, just as before, as we come up to the during the meeting, we kind of poll the audience, see if there's any questions or comments or anything you wanted to bring up while you were here before. I'm very curious. I think you run a very good meeting. I'm quite impressed with all of it. You, you know, you went along quickly. You answered all your questions. You have all the resolutions going through. Can I ask you who the name Chris is? So Chris is one of our operators. He's a greater operator. A greater operator. Or a Durban okay. shop. That's yeah. the only question I really have. Yeah. You should see and I don't know what LUD means. Oh, Lo that's the local, local urban, urban district. district of the needle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so both, like you said, that there's supposed to be like two people coming. One was a kennel thing, and one was the bylaw thing. And both they were, they were both kennels. kennels. Neither one appeared. Appeared. Okay. <laughs> and then, and they like normally people would call us and say they wanted to come, but because of some things we're doing there, we wanted to provide every opportunity. So we scheduled the time, even though they hadn't said they were coming. Just. So if they came, we didn't say, oh, well, you're not on the agenda yeah. tonight. Oh, we wanted to make sure that well, if they showed wise. up, we could could deal yeah, with it. See, when we go on camera, you think this went smooth. Where do we get the camera? Well, that's <laughs> 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 well, that's when I go to the, the, the post, but they do that. They shuffle us in and out like multiple times. But you know, this is probably a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you do in camera? So in camera, there's certain things we can't discuss in public. Uh, so if it's uh, tonight, we have on our list, we have a bunch of resumes for a couple positions. Oh, okay. So we're going to go through the resumes and there'll be some rather open discussion about, mm -hmm. you know, if we know the people, what we think they'd be like. We haven't interviewed them yet, so we'll be deciding for offering interviews tonight. Uh, we have one legal matter that's very early on. We have somebody that's quite upset with us. Uh, so we're going to update counsel on the latest on that from the lawyer scene. Um, we don't know that there's much else. We'll probably spend a couple minutes tonight on bylaw enforcement. So we've got some concerns that have come up. Some people have made some complaints about the things people complained to Kelsey about. about private stuff. Yeah, yeah it's, stuff that you yeah. wouldn't want yeah. somebody to yeah. 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 Don't feel bad, girls. We kicked Jeremy out, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got the camera. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Typically. The reason why the meetings run so smoothly is we have an excellent chairman. I was going to say, it was very well done, very well. I've never been to one, so I was curious. Will you have to come again? Yeah, come I might. Again, absolutely. I might. Come again. Yeah. Can we phone ahead of time what the agenda might be? We try to post it on the website, okay. but we don't always get it the very early. Yeah. But you're welcome to call. Yeah. Um, and if we, you know, it, it shows up once we get it done to the point where it's fairly solid, we post it publicly. Okay. And then any of the stuff we're talking about tonight, like when you hear me say it's attached in private, you can't see it. But anything else that's attached, if you go to the website, you can click it and read the whole thing. It's all there for you. Mm -hmm. So you can see, like for example, that agreement with the government on the five hundred thousand. Yes. You can go click it and read the whole thing if you want. Yeah, anything that shows without a lock, you can open. Yeah. And even if you have a concern, put your name on the agenda via delegation. Just don't do it on Valentine's Day or Brian's anniversary. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. The, meeting, the meetings are always changed. <laughs> the rest of it doesn't matter. Well, I, you're right. <laughs> very special. Uh, every, six, every sixth year, Sherry uh, shows up on Bell and I'm <laughs> 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 yeah. 
With that, we will adjourn for 10 minutes. We'll be back here to go in camera. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good, Good night. Vote one. Be resolved that pursuant to section 1523 of the Municipal Act, Council shall meet as a committee to hold, to close the meeting, and continue discussions in camera regarding personnel matters, negotiations, preliminary discussions, unresolved legal matters, and investigation or enforcement of an act or bylaw. Is there a mover? Councillor Neely and someone to second the resolution. Councillor Blasha. A uh, note to Council that. Uh, Councillor Kushnerik has an engagement we're going to send him to at 9 o'clock. Uh, so we may have a note in the minutes that he left, but that's something we're sending him to on our behalf. Uh, we'll call the question. Those in favor? That is carried. <laughs> Coming out of in camera 12 3, any resolutions arising from the in camera discussions? Good thing it's not election year. Hearing none, we'll go to 13. Notice of motion. Does anyone have a notice to present tonight? Uh, we should note, by the way, now we're on a camera that Councillor Kushner did leave us about 10 minutes ago uh, to attend a meeting uh, to discuss funding for the Splash Park. Point number 14, be it resolved, this meeting shall now adjourn at 8.47 p.m. Oh, my goodness. Be it resolved that the next meeting of Council shall be scheduled for Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, at 7 p.m. Or it's no, April 9th. Yeah. Well, this is second, a second Stop. Up. Yeah, we're, we're, still moving. we're gonna fix this. Second and fourth. Still moving. Next. Regular meeting of council. Held April twenty-third, twenty twenty-four. Okay. Be it further resolved the next regular meeting of council will be held April twenty-third, twenty twenty-four at seven PM. Moved by Councillor Bloss, a second by Councillor Neely. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. Those in favor? That is carried.